Welcome to Inside Arvada, the city of Arvada's podcast, where we bring you conversations with the people who make Arvada a thriving community. Hear stories about the past, present, and future of Arvada through the lens of the city team members who help make it all happen. Explore the complex topics impacting our community. From the roads you drive, to the water you drink, the parks where you play, to what your neighbors think. Join us as we take you inside Arvada. Hello and welcome to Inside Arvada, Episode 2. I'm one of your hosts, Sean Starr. So glad that you're joining us. In case you missed it, our first episode of our new podcast featured Adele Burton with Festivals and Public Arts. I'm joined today by my co-host, Katie Patterson. Hi, Katie. Hey, Sean. Great to be here today. Yeah, so excited for today's episode. We have Nature Center Director Anna Hoover. And Anna has been with the Nature Center now for almost eight years, and she has a really interesting story in that she started as a part-time marketing specialist back in 2016, and she's worked her way all the way up to be the director now where she's been for the past three years. Just a really fun interview with Anna. I always love spending time with her in meetings because she always has some really interesting facts and useful information to add about any number of topics. So I really enjoyed my time today, or our time with Anna. Yeah, it was really great to hear all of the the things that she's so knowledgeable about around our environment and our ecosystems and the work they do at Majestic View. And um, we talked about Earth Day and the events they have coming up really quickly here, uh, plastics and the importance of recycling, and then the really wide variety of programming they have there really for all ages and all groups. And whatever you're interested in, there's probably something for you. So let's dig into it. Anna Hoover, Nature Center Director. Welcome to Inside Arvada. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's going to be a lot of fun talking about the Nature Center. Yeah, let's begin a little bit by telling us about yourself and what you do for the city. So um, obviously I'm Anna. I am the Nature Center Director at the Nature Center in the middle of Majestic View Park. Um, and there at the Nature Center, we're a, what's called an interpretive site. So as a certified interpretive manager, I help lead the strategic vision and execution of all of the environmental education services that we have. Um, I manage a, an incredibly strong team of naturalists that do a lot of programming. We do concert or conservation research. We do um our demonstration garden and just interacting with people, helping them to learn and connect with our natural spaces. Um, And that's part of my passion. I'm uh, in the middle of a graduate degree getting conservation biology uh, master's. So I absolutely love it. Yeah, the Nature Center really is like one of the coolest, like most unique services and programs that the city offers and provides. And I encourage anyone who's never been out there to to take advantage, check it out. Uh, first off, let's do a little, you know, Nature Center 101. Where is the Nature Center located? What are some of your hours and how could people learn more? So the Nature Center, we often hear from people who have lived in Arvada for many years is a hidden gem because they come to it and they're just in awe of all of the things that are in the park. We have beautiful mountain sort of panoramic views. We have wetland areas. We have prairie grasslands. We have just about two miles of trails. Um, and that's just the park itself. Um, inside the nature center, it's on a hill overlooking the lake. And you can it, interact with not only our outdoor demonstration garden to see some of the native and regionally appropriate plants that we have, uh, but we have interactive displays and exhibits so you can go into and crawl into the life-size beaver dam and really feel what it's like to be a beaver in some of our waterways or um, sort of interact with what we have an augmented reality sandbox that really projects a live typography map of a watershed. So um, as you move the sand, it'll create a new watershed map and you can simulate rain and, and flooding and islands and you can kind of play around with the the sand and the typography of it. And so it's really fun ways to learn and to have a memorable experience. Um, and for the most part, everything at the Nature Center is free to visit, free to join, free to explore. Um, the park is open pretty much dawn to dusk. Um, so the parking lot and the park, anybody can come even when the Nature Center itself is closed. Um, but the Nature Center is open for public hours Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 3. But we have a lot of programs outside of those hours too. So we have school field trip programs or group programs by request. So groups can come and they can have a 
very specific deep dive into trees or more of a broader scope of envir- or ecosystems and environments. Um, we also do a pretty widespread of public programs for pretty much any age group. So um, littles all the way up to adults and families. We do astronomy nights, bird walks, art classes, all kinds of things um, in our public programming. And then we also, we offer up community spaces for um, partner organizations or families that, uh, or even just any community member that wants to kind of connect with the site. We have rental availabilities, um, and we also do a lot of partnerships with other events at the Nature Center, too. Um, So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you always have so much going on, you know, not just during, you know, the summer and spring, but throughout the winter as well. You know, we're kind of right in the middle of spring right now, and we're getting close to Earth Day coming up. And that's part of the reason why we wanted to have you on now is because every year the Nature Center has a Earth Day celebration. I think Earth Day is on April 22nd this year, but the Earth Day celebration is on April 20th. That's a Saturday. Uh, Tell us a little bit more about this year's event. Yeah, so this year, Earth Day is all about plastics versus planet. Um, So on April 20th, between 10 to noon, we're going to have a lot of really interesting and fun free family activities all around plastic. So we'll have sort of plastic activities. People can come and make their own tote bag. We're going to make little earth seed balls um, that you can throw and just have sort of eliminate the plastic and planting, um, all sorts of fun stuff. We'll even have a trash cleanup contest for a free rain barrel drawing. Um, so if you come and you pick up a bag of trash, you'll get a ticket enter to the drawing. If you also provide sustainable transportation, if you bike or walk to the event, you'll get an extra drawing ticket um, for a free 55 gallon drum rain barrel. Um, we also have our Earth Day poster contest as part of that event. So we ask all of our Vada youth to come and give us their posters based off of the theme. So something to encourage plastic sustainability or um, earth friendliness around um, reducing or reusing a lot of the plastic materials that we have every day. And the top two posters are going to get a free tree um, provided by our forestry department to plant in their Arvada school or park. Um, so that's always fun to see. You know, we usually get a couple dozen posters that we display at the nature center for the event and um, for the month after the event to sure to showcase all the amazing imagination of creativity that our students have in Arvada. Um, And then we have also a lot of partners that come to that event. So we'll have a lot of different booths and tables that are going to have interactive activities and sort of giveaways and things like that. How can um, students or youth submit posters? So all of our poster guidelines, um, like the size of the paper and what we need as far as like contact information is on the website. So if you go to majesticviewnc.org, you'll see the Earth Day website with all of the poster information. And then they can either email that to the Nature Center at majesticviewnc at arvada.org, or they can hand deliver an actual like physical copy of their poster. If we have the physical copy, it's a little bit nicer of a print to like hang up and actually display. Um, If they email it, we try to the best of our ability to print it in a nice quality, but we don't get like some of the, some of the posters have like 3D elements that are attached and glued and mod podged on and they're fantastic. Um, so that's always fun to see the physical posters at the Nature Center and they can just drop them off during our public hours. Very cool. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you mentioned this year's theme of Earth Day is plastics versus planet. You know, we've been hearing a lot about plastics and and why they are so bad for the environment. You know, Colorado enacted the uh, single use uh, bag fee recently, banning plastic bags at grocery stores and even restaurant and takeout items. Why are plastics? Why are we you know so against plastics and eliminating the use of plastics right now? So plastics. They stick around forever in the sense they don't truly decompose. They never get digested by um, bacteria or by bugs or things to break down into its core molecular elements. So even though plastic might deteriorate over time, it's just breaking into tinier pieces of the same thing, tinier pieces of plastic. We call that microplastic. Um, Even if it does get recycled, it only extends the life of the plastic a certain amount and then it the structural integrity of the plastic usually deteriorates to where it's no longer usable as a container or a wrapping or whatever its purpose originally was. So it eventually will still end up somewhere in a landfill or in our environment, which that can then mean we get plastic in our food sources, in our soil, in our water. And so it has a a very broad systematic impact. Um, And so 
just recycling it isn't always the the sort of end all solution. Um, And even with that, only about 9% of plastic globally gets recycled. So most plastic that ever gets created today is not going to be um, recycled or reused. So finding ways to eliminate the use of that plastic or finding alternative ways to create sustainable and more biodegradable and more uh, earth friendly ways to package things, to wrap things, to contain things, um, the better. Of course, we want everyone to come out to the Earth Day celebration there on April 20th at the Nature Center. Um, But we also want to encourage our community to celebrate Earth Day every day, 365 days a year. And we work together on some messaging for the most recent Arvada Report edition, encouraging people, you know, some easy tips on how they can be more sustainable and more eco-friendly with their, you know, lifestyle. And what were some of those tips that we included that are, you know, simple to enact in your everyday lifestyle? So, yeah, the the center spread of the Arvada Report had a lot of really great resources to go to for information. So where to check the air quality and whether or not it's a good idea to carpool or find alternative transportation than just driving your vehicle. Um, finding places to find free trees or discounted native plants that can help re-landscape your wildlife or your yard into a wildlife habitat or making it pollinator friendly. Um, Some of those, if you look around and you look at some of the resources that are out there, um, they're typically very happy to help and work with a lot of families and a lot of people just to make sure that it's affordable, um, accessible, and it's relevant to what their desires are. I mean, we've got at the Nature Center a really great demonstration garden. We have, you know, 25,000 square feet. And every fall we offer a free seed giveaway. So anybody can come and sort of see what the plant looks like next to where we offer free seeds for that plant. Um, and so there's resources out there. And the Center Spread just had a small sampling of some of the amazing things that you can find. Um, for people who even can't remember some of those resources, just five simple um, tips to remember how to be earth friendly every day is just to remember your five R. So if you kind of look at your hand, there's five different fingers and five different touch points that you can do to make things more sustainable. So you can refuse items that are unsustainably produced or just wasteful. You can reduce the amount of plastics or reduce the amount of waste that you create in your everyday life, um, or even just reduce how much you spend on um, transportation, how far you go, consolidate your trips into one trip will save you gas, save you money, save you time. Um, Reusing items. So reusing uh, containers for um, If you have, you know, a bag, reusing it, washing it again instead of just using it one time or even better, I like repurposing things. There's a million creative ways that you can find to repurpose a lot of everyday items. You can take a butter tub and instead of using it for food storage, you can make it into a craft container. You can use it to hold water for some other painting job or you can catch bugs with it and look at all the cool wildlife you have in your backyard. Um, And then the last R is to uh, think about recycling. If it is recyclable, obviously that's still helpful. It still extends the life and reuses that plastic. Um, So it's better than just throwing it away. Awesome. Those are some great tips because I know for some people, for a lot of people, they want to become more environmentally conscious. And that just can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes when you hear about, you know, becoming more climate resilient and the, you know, um, reducing your carbon footprint. But it, some people just don't know where to start. And so those are some really good realistic tips that people can, you know, begin. They're mostly free and a great, um, great advice there. Um, uh, moving on to more about the Nature Center. Um, like you, I mentioned, you have a lot of really awesome stuff going on year round other than the um, Earth Day event this year. What other sort of programs and classes um, can people look forward to out at the Nature Center this spring and summer? Yeah, so this spring we're gearing up. We have a lot of school field trips, but we also have a lot of other things going on. We have um, every season we put out a bingo hunt that we hide little items throughout the garden and along the trails in the park. So you can kind of go on a little scavenger hunt and find the things along the trails. And you can do that anytime, even if the nature center is closed. Um, And then if you get a bingo uh, four in a row or diagonal, you can come and get a little prize from our nature treasure chest. Um, We also have summer camps coming up. So every year we have... uh, 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 about nine weeks of different themed summer camps that our Valley youth or anybody can join and register for. Um, and they're fantastic. One year we had um, a theme where it was like superheroes and villains and they were uh, solving 
adaptation puzzles to thwart the villain trying to drain the lake and um, just really fun themes. Um, and this year, we're it's looking like we're going to have even better themes. So it's going to be super fun. Um, we also have lots of other programs. We do monthly birding. We've got meditations coming back up at the Nature Center, um, art classes, garden workshops, um, and even a new exhibit. So coming up later in April, we've got a new montane exhibit, um, and we're calling it the Pika Who's in the Forest. So you'll get to have sort of this immersive and sensory experience of all the critters that you could find in Colorado forests. Um, you can look under the camouflage and find bats. You can smell the ponderosa butterscotch smell. You can hear the little sounds of the frogs and the birds and the woodpeckers and play with little magnetic grubs through the bark. Um, so it'll be a really fun interactive exhibit at the Nature Center coming up soon. Later this summer, we'll also have another big event. Um, we've got uh, our pollinator garden tour. So coming up in August, we do a tour where we partner with other gardeners in Arvada that have already transitioned their yard into something that's more water conserving, more pollinator friendly. And they are hosts to share their yard and their experiences creating that with the tour participants. So visitors can come and ask questions about how did you do it? How long did it take to transition? Where did you find your plants? How did you design it? And asking all of these questions from real citizens and residents who have, um, already gone through that process and they can get tips, get ideas, share resources and have a lot of fun just exploring some of the pollinator friendly gardens in Arvada. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the pollinator gardens because, you know, you hear a lot about that, I feel like these days, but some people may not be aware of why it's so important to provide those habitats for pollinators and why pollinators are so important. So pollinators and a lot of insects in general are on a pretty heavy decline due to a lot of environmental factors. Some of it's climate, some of it's pollution, some of it is just loss of habitat. Um, and so one of the ways that we can help our pollinators not only help us keep food sustainable, but also to make sure that um, sort of the larger system of our ecosystem is functioning and working is to provide some of that habitat. And Doing it in your backyard, transitioning from sort of a monoculture of like one grass species, you can change it into more of a, a biodiverse habitat with different flowering plants that flower at different times of the year for the pollinators and, and nectar, um, having different textures. So having ones that have more of a woody stalk versus more under low growth ground cover provides habitat shelter for insects to overwinter. It provides them space and uh places for them to lay their eggs. If you have monarch butterflies or you want to have monarch butterflies, they have a specific plant that you can plant called milkweed. Um, and you'll get uh, monarchs that'll lay their eggs on only that type of plant. So um, you can also sort of see what insects are in your area, what host plants they have and add that to your garden. Um, and you're more likely going to see some of the amazing wildlife that we have that either live or pass through Colorado. Awesome. And taking a little bit of a kind of larger picture step back at the Nature Center, um, what are some, you know, long term plans that you have in store? I know you have um, some exciting things happening there with the new classroom that's um, in the works. Tell us more about that project. Yeah, so that project got started. Um, we were fortunate enough to get some funds from the sale of the Denver Broncos um, a couple years back, and it was all tied towards youth programming. And so we were able to get some of that to help remove some of the failing structures that were still left over in the park. And at one of those structures, we're going to be building up a new classroom that's going to more than double our capacity for our camps and our school field trips and sort of just programming in general. Um, and so we're having a new classroom built right next door to the Nature Center that's going to be um, open and available for programming, for community rentals or anything like that. Um, and a lot of it's going to be in partnership with our Friends of group. We have a partner, uh, Friends of the Majestic View Nature Center 501C3. Um, and so they're even hosting a fundraising picnic in the park this summer. So coming up in July, we're having a picnic promenade come out for brunch and um, silent auction and kind of see some of the cool things that we're doing um, and some of the support that we've got from the community. It's really fun to see everybody getting excited about this project. Uh, and that eventually down the road will just lead to more programming, more uh uh, nature center programming and other sites across Arvada. So um, nature play elements coming at Gold Strike Park or um, over by the reservoir, anything like that. Um, that's just sort of where we're headed and we're excited. That's awesome. So we got a good start from the Broncos money and then, you know, we've gotten some 
progress toward achieving our goal and fundraising it, but we still have some more work to do. How can people help achieve our goal and, and reach the the funds that we need to, to fund this classroom? Yeah. So this classroom, um, we're still about $150,000, $200,000 um, that we really like to make it spectacular without having to cut elements that would make our programs really um, work smoothly and work sort of up to the interpretive standard of today's interpretive sites. Um, and so there's a couple ways that people can help. One is just joining our newsletter, being engaged with us and sharing the news of what we're doing. Um, we send out a bi-monthly newsletter at the Nature Center where we talk about our programs and how to register, but also about our upcoming events. So there'll be information about that picnic in there. We also share behind the scenes sneak peeks and some fun facts that we learn every day as a naturalist. We're always curious. So if we find something new in the park, we love to share it with our newsletter folks. Um, so you'll see some of our wildlife camera capturing, uh, you know, the muskrat in the lake, or you'll find some of the baby deer that get born in the park and we see them through the camera trails. Um, it, we have a lot of those fun little snippets. Um, obviously joining programs and joining some of these events helps, but then also we have a lot of volunteer opportunities. So having people come and help with our events, but also with conservation research, with our fundraising, um, partnering events like the picnic, um, to helping take care of our animal ambassadors. We have some reptiles at the nature center, um, that we weekly work on, you know, handling with training. We do, um, tank changes and all that. Um, there's a lot of different opportunities at the Nature Center. So we always are welcoming volunteers. And it's a really fun way to get to know some of the other community members in the area um, as we do group projects and we work on some, like this display that's coming up is is a lot of it is being uh, made possible by volunteers. And so we wouldn't be able to do all that we do without them. Yeah, similar to Adele with festivals, um, you rely heavily on our on our volunteers, and we really appreciate the contributions they make to make things possible. Um, last but not least, um, we want to touch on off leash dogs there at the Nature Center, um, just because it is a hot topic, especially now during spring as we get a little bit into warmer weather. Um, help us understand how much of an issue it is at the Nature Center there, and um, you know what people should be doing, mainly keeping their dogs on a leash, right? Yeah, so um, we see it in pretty much every park, but at Majestic View Park, we often see people have their dogs off leash and their dogs will go off the trail. So they'll either go into our prairie arboretum, they'll go into our wetlands, they go um, basically into our wildlife and open space areas. Um, and one of the, the best advice we have for if people see that is to just help with peer accountability. Um, it's a culture change that is going to make things impactful and lasting. And so reminding your your fellow community members like, hey, that's, you know, not safe. It's not um, it, it's impactful to our habitat. And we want to keep the parks preserved and well maintained and off leash dogs hinders that. Um, some of that is because off leash dogs they're, they're canines and they leave scents. They have a really strong sense of smell. And so as they leave the trail, they're leaving a scent that's going to last for hours after that dog is there. And that's going to impact all of the wildlife that interact and pass through that area hours after they're there. So coyotes, foxes, raccoons, skunks, they're all going to smell and react and interact with that scent trail. Um, so that's also why we sometimes will start seeing lots of coyote scat on the trail is because there's been lots of dogs that defecate and they don't get that picked up like they're supposed to. Um, or coyotes will often escort. Um, they will kind of just watch and follow uh, from a distance. They'll kind of just follow a canine out of their territory because that's where they're raising their young and that's where they're establishing their little pack. Um, and if you have lots of off-leash dogs, you're going to have increased risks of conflict, of disease spread. Um, and it's going to it's gonna make your dog at risk of getting hurt. Um, if not spreading it to other dogs in the community. So it's really about safety for the dogs, for our wildlife, and then also for all the visitors at Majestic View. We have thousands of kids that come through the park, and if you have your dog off leash, you never know what could happen if it gets stung by a bee and starts getting crazy and it runs into a big group of kids. It's it's a safety hazard. So um, we keep track of, of the dogs that have um, their dogs off leash. We try to talk to as many of them as we can. Um, but obviously, if there's ever like an immediate threat or if you have a, a good opportunity to call animal management, um, that's always a, a good go to if there's resources needed. 
Absolutely. Yep. And just to set the record straight, it is against city code to have your dog off leash in any public park or public trail. With one exception, we have the West Arvada Dog Park out there near the Arvada Reservoir, kind of by Bird's Nest Disc Golf Course. So if you do need to get your dog off leash, go over to West Arvada Dog Park. Otherwise, keep that leash on your dog. All right, I'm going to go turn it over to Katie for our lightning round. All right, Anna, are you ready? We're going to do some quick fire questions. Um, so first, what is your favorite thing about Arvada? It can be a place, a fact, or a hidden gem. I Like I said, the Majestic View Park is a hidden gem, but one of my favorite places is there's a spot down by the lake where we have a really big willow tree and sitting sort of inside that willow tree or right next to the stump, you can hear and see the seasons pass in such a cool, immersive way that it is sort of just refreshing and that's my favorite spot. I have been to that spot myself with my dog on leash, I may know. Uh, it is a good spot. Yeah. Uh, what is your first, last, or best concert? Um, I don't typically go to concerts, but the last concert I did go to was Queen with Adam Lambert. Um, and that was really fun. I've always been a Queen fan, and I, I do think Adam Lambert did uh, Freddie some some justice there. It was really fun. The whole audience was like really into it. We had our phone lights out and all the, the lasers and everything. So that was the last concert I went to, and it was a blast. So cool. I'm sure that was very extravagant, too. Mm -hmm. uh, what brought you to work for the city of Arvada? So I started with Arvada as a part-time remote marketing assistant while I was still in college at the Nature Center. Um, I was originally going to go into, like, zookeeping, and when I decided that I missed the human element of interaction, um, I switched over to environmental education, and I got connected to Arvada and the Nature Center and wanted to jump in and help out where I could. And as hours came up and positions opened up, I was able to take on more and get into more projects and help out. And it's been a lot of fun. All the way up to the top now. All the way up to the top. Yeah. I love it. What was your first job? My first job was a summer camp instructor with the Denver Zoo. So I was, um, I volunteered at the Denver Zoo for a lot of years prior to that. And then um, when I started switching into environmental education, I was able to get on as an instructor there and got to teach and play and uh, sort of lead a whole bunch of kids on all the different things about animals and habitats and cultures from around the world and how they interact with our wildlife. Very cool. Uh, and last but not least, what is your favorite project that you've worked on since you've been at the city? One of my favorite projects that I've done with the city is probably going to be our Beaver Dam exhibit. Uh, we spent several months from sitting around a table with a bunch of volunteers with toothpicks and marshmallows, mapping out how we wanted this Beaver Dam to to sit in the in the area and how we wanted kids to be able to crawl through and poke their heads through and and stand up in and add to it. Like the creativity that came out of that project was inspiring um all the way to the the construction phase where we had it was it was kind of like santa's workshop all these volunteers were wood chipping away trying to make little like beaver chew marks on the wood and we had volunteers and our team like add little paw prints from our we have little beaver molds so we have beaver paw prints in the mud and the plaster to kind of show how they pack it and seal it up and um there's like a little painted beaver in the back that's lit up and so it shows little bubbles and everything like that so I would say that's probably one of my favorite projects. It was just so much fun. That is really a cool exhibit. So thanks for sharing. And thanks for explaining so much about the Nature Center. Um, it's been really great to have you on today. And we really appreciate your time. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. So before we let you go today, a couple other news items and events coming up here in Arvada. As always, please don't forget to submit your feedback and questions to us by emailing us at podcast at arvada.org. And one question that we get a lot is about the Ralston Central Park Pavilion. And so can you reserve that pavilion? How do you reserve pavilions? Can you tell us a little bit about that, Sean, please? Yeah, so the Ralston Central Park Pavilion is not reservable. It's first come, first serve. And so we ask... Be considerate of others and please limit your time there to about two hours so that other people can enjoy that amenity. We do have 11 park pavilions throughout the city that are reservable. And so for more information and to reserve those, you can visit us online at arvadaco.gov slash park pavilions. Also, after you use one of those pavilions, particularly the Ralston Central Park Pavilion, please clean up after yourself. We have park maintenance, you know, does some cleanup 
uh, around the city, but uh, you know, be considerate of others and, and make the area cleaner than when you got there. And we'll put the link to um, how to reserve pavilions in our bio as well for the episode. And it is also paving season. And so here in Arvada, we have an annual paving program that chooses a variety of um, different roads around town to apply different treatments to to help maintain our roads and they also replace curb ramps to make them ADA accessible through that and so we'll put a link in the show notes to the program page where there's a map of the areas that are proposed for work this year so you can see if um, there's an area in your neighborhood for that and then um, there's a volunteer appreciation event coming up on April 27th so Sean tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we have hundreds of volunteers um, that work with the city through a number of different programs. And so since April is National Volunteer Appreciation Month, we are holding a volunteer appreciation event at the Nature Center on Saturday, Saturday, April 27th. And so we've sent invites to all our volunteers. So please RSVP to that event if you have not yet. We also want to remind you that uh, carpooling and biking to the event is encouraged because uh, parking will be limited there. Bike Friendly Arvada will have a bike valet to encourage people to bike to the event. And then we also have High Tea for Seniors coming up on Saturday, May 4th at the Apex Community Center. And that's an afternoon tea celebration for our community members who are 90 years young. So if you know anyone who would like to attend, you can reach out to our special events manager, Adele Burton, to RSVP, send her an email at aburton at arvada.org. And thank you again so much to our guest today, Anna Hoover. It was so great to have her on. Be sure to listen to our next episode. We'll be featuring Public Works Director Jacqueline Rhodes, where we're going to cover a variety of topics related to transportation that we often hear from the community. So that's going to include things like the pause and work that's coming up on the West 72nd Avenue widening project and connecting Arvada, which is the city's first comprehensive transportation plan, which is under development right now. So stay tuned and be sure to stay in touch with us. In the meantime, you can visit us online at arvadaco.gov slash podcast, where you can subscribe to the show and you can send us an email at podcast at arvada.org to ask us questions to be answered on the next episode. And thanks so much to our listeners. Please subscribe, rate, and review the show. And today's hosts were Katie Patterson and Sean Starr. Recording and editing support was provided by Arvada Media Services producer, James Long. Thanks for listening. I'm going to leave you with a fun fact again for today's episode. Earth Day is the largest secular observance in the world, celebrated by more than 192 countries and more than 1 billion people. Whoa.